Tiger, what are you looking at? Well, we all knew that this time would come, but it's still sad nonetheless. Yesterday, for the first time in 99 days, the average price of gas did not go down. The previous 99 days were an important political lifeline for the Biden administration, lowering at least the severity of inflation at the pump and reducing the flashing sign every American has to drive past as a daily reminder of his failed policy. Now, it's not an exaggeration to say that a decline in gas prices is one of the reasons midterm elections are even close at all. So in an environment where we return to possibly $5 gas, the entire landscape could be completely different. We have exactly 48 days until the election, which you can either look at as just around the corner or political eternity. With gas, I'm going to choose the latter because of just how much it hits people's pocketbooks. So let's do a deep dive into gas and where it's going. First and foremost, why were gas prices down in the first place? It would be nice to say it was a result of competent policy by the White House and the West after Ukraine. But the sad truth is data from AAA and other motor analysts say that after gas hit $5 a gallon, people just stopped driving so much. AAA found in July that drivers are, quote, almost two-thirds of U.S. adults changed their driving habits or lifestyle since March, 23% making, quote, major changes. Drivers' top three changes to offset high gas are driving less, combining errands, reducing shopping, and dining out. That was always my fear with high gas prices. We wouldn't solve it through policy. The only way would just be make people live less comfortable lives. In fact, in the first week of September, demand for gas was 7% lower than the first week of July. That is a stunning drop, even when you consider July is part of the major driving season in the United States. Further explanations on gas also come from demand, just not demand here in the U.S. The economic crisis in Europe has significantly reduced gas demand on the continent, and China's zero-COVID idiocy has helped, too, because it literally forces people not to drive. To their limited credit, the Biden administration has at least been releasing oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve over the last few months, which have helped further drop the price of oil. To date, they released 155 million barrels of oil from a set promise of 180 million. They just announced a further sale of 10, mil bill 10 million barrels in November, and that's going to help a little bit. But the numbers show they are nearing the end of their rope. And the reason I'm setting it up this way is because it's important to understand why prices were dropping in the last 99 days. It was a confluence of mega high gas driving down U.S. demand, demand destruction in China, and Europe for a variety of different reasons. It was bolstered similarly a little bit by U.S. policy with the SPR. The problem with all those factors is this is probably the low point. And to borrow a phrase, the price is still too damn high. The national price of gas right now is $3.68 a gallon. For most of the Western United States, that price is above $4 a gallon. And in California, their gas is still an average of $540. So to put that in context, that is still 43% higher than the average gas price in September 2019 pre-pandemic almost 60% higher than gas in January of 2020, the last month truly before the effects of COVID were fully known here. If this is the bottom, that's not good. It's not a victory. And with the slight uptick for the first time in 99 days, things can get real ugly. As we discussed earlier, Russia is showing no signs of backing down, holding referendums, they're partially mobilizing 300,000 of their people, gearing up for what looks like a long, long conflict. The disruption to the global supply chain, the European oil squeeze, is going to continue. Furthermore, while I supported using the SPR to stop the oil crisis, while we got our policy figured out, the problem is we didn't actually figure out any policy in the meantime. Right now, the SPR reserve is at the lowest level since 1984. Again, wouldn't be a problem if foreign policy and other plans could have brought more oil online, but there appears to have been no structural changes made to global oil supply in the meantime, meaning we just depleted a ton of oil from the SPR, we can't really tap it in the future, and in fact, we'll probably have to buy more oil to fill it back up. On the foreign policy front, Biden had four months to secure some sort of agreement somewhere. What they landed on was the dumbest scheme of all time. Number one, trying to cap the global price of Russian oil. Of course, that literally only works if you have total control over the global market. Immediately after announcing their genius plan, the Russians came out and said, okay, we just won't sell it to anyone at that price cap. And the Indians and the Chinese are like, hey, we'll buy more at whatever price as long as you want. As long as that Russian price is lower than the global market price, they're making a killing. So outside of Russia, what did they do? Instead of securing some agreement with the Saudis, the Venezuelans, or anyone else with oil, the majority of OPEC countries instead chose to actually cut back oil production two weeks ago. That cut was less about depleting supply, but about signaling to the global market, 
OPEC, they are loving high gas prices. Specifically, they will defend $100 a barrel, a price which is now floating much of these petro economies. It was described this way, quote, OPEC plus is demonstrating it is willing to shrug off the entities of the Biden administration, which has been lobbying Saudi Arabia, the UAE, and other producers to increase output and help bring down the price of gasoline. So in effect, Biden's slob job trip to Riyadh accomplished nothing. In fact, all indications currently say the Saudis are two-timing us, both buying oil from Russia at a discount that they burn domestically and then selling as much of their oil at high price to us. It's all a big game to them, except for the people here at home who are getting gouged. I don't really have a hopeful way to end this. The stoppage and decline of price indicates we have probably hit the floor. Now we're in for the fun times. Another single shock to send us right back up to $5 a gallon, maybe beyond. Hurricane could do it, more developments on the Russian front, maybe in China. The fact is, the last three months, it was more of a vacation away from reality, and it seems to be coming back hard. And that's really what I took away from this. I was like, Grim. hmm. Well, I was like, hmm, you know, maybe why did it- Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is, they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.